Now, can you imagine this? These statistics will actually shock you. You know, it's so shocking. You know what? Kenyans actually gambled or they bet with 242 million Kenyan shillings each and every day. That is equivalent to like 200 million or 2 million dollars each and every day. That is the money that is channeled towards betting. Like if you were to take everyone who is betting and gambling, you put them together in a day, they bet with over 2 million dollars each and every day. And by the way, for information, guess how much is that is? That is like 200 million Kenyan shillings, that is in terms of dollars. And what happens is that this is equivalent of 10.1 million Kenyan shillings in an hour. That's what they bet. And again, uh, no, that is 2 million dollars. That is 242 million. That's what they bet in a single day. And that is like 168,333 Kenyan shillings in every minute. Can you imagine this? Just in 60 seconds, one, two, three, up to 60 seconds, Kenyans have actually bet with over 168,333. That is over like a th oh my goodness, I'm telling you, that is each and every minute, and that is equivalent to 2,806 thousand Kenyan shillings that is per second and guess what the government collected a tax of 6.64 billion Kenyan shillings out of that particular year that is of 2023 and do you know how much is that in collection how much Kenyan they actually gambled in the year 2023 okay that is equivalent to 88.5 billion Kenyan shillings. This will get it from the Business Times. Business Times or Business Daily, this is like a big great magazine from the, uh, I bet is the National uh, NMG, that is National Media Group of something of sort of Kenya. It's an amazing uh, paper that you can actually check it out there. So the point is, this is the amount of money. 88.5 billion Kenyan shillings is what Kenyan actually dedicated towards betting and gambling. That's like 800 million dollars. What exactly does that tell you? Isn't that a country on a crisis on a very serious note? Obviously, Kenya is not like a well greatest country on earth in terms of the economies. We are somewhere, obviously. We feature somewhere on earth as well as the continent of Africa. But the point is, if people can actually channel that money towards betting and what have you. And can you imagine this? The same, same country. The same, same, same country that is betting this much. Guess what happens now? Over 80% of Kenyans, this according to the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics, over 80% of Kenyans, they do not have savings. They don't have savings. And guess what? The 20% that have the savings, 80% of them, they have less than 100,000 in their savings account. People are betting crazily. And what exactly is happening when people are betting this crazily? And by the way, you know what? The government of Kenya has tried, has tried to I tried to what we call the increment of the taxes and what have you. Back then, back when I was in a campus, I come some couple of years ago, there were no taxes on the betting companies. But right now, as we speak, there are taxes on those betting companies. And guess what? Despite the tax increment, Kenyans are still betting. As we speak right now, probably somebody is watching this video and then you have a sideline book there. They're about to go and watch their match analysis and whatever they're going to bet and gamble and all those kind of things. And let me tell you one secret, guys. Why, why am I even making this video? Just for the sake of people who are betting and gambling out there. The reason why they are simply doing that, it is because they tend to believe that they are lucky. They're going to get their lucky day. They're going to get the money that they're looking for in the sense that, hey, you know what? I might actually go ahead and bet and be the lucky one and be able to get some cash. You know what? At what rate does that lucky kind of thing happen each and every time? And I always tell people, and never forget this as long as you live, gambling and betting cannot guarantee you. It is not a wise financial move to take. And there is no way you can assume that I'm lucky. And I've to always told you, like, guys, you know what? You know, when it comes to success, it's always an intersection between two points. It's an intersection between the hard work and also what you call being lucky. And you can only control how hard you can be able to work. You don't even know how lucky you can be. You don't even know when the luck will actually hit you. So the thing you do is that you move towards where you know you can actually be picked by luck. But that is through investing into real and legit things, you know, tangible things that ensures your capital preservation. Because one thing that you're supposed to do is that the betting and the gambling does not assure you what you call the capital of preservation because the next minute you can actually bet the money though they always tell you you know what bet without what you can afford to lose but how many even listen to that specific thing there are some conditions that you have to follow you have to be 18 years and above you have to bet without what you can afford to lose and all those kind of things now betting generally was actually regarded as a fun kind of doing maybe with your friends and what have you but people are actually turning into it into what we call 
like a source of their income. And I always ask, ask this question. And this is the reason why I used to bet back then, but I realized that I lost a lot of money. And this is the reason why I used to ask myself, where then, if I think like having a lot of money can actually facilitate me betting and be able to win, then why is the wealthy people are not getting into this betting if truly there is money to be won in these particular ventures? Then I realized most of the people who are actually struggling with even the basic needs are the people who are actually betting. I used to have a friend of me whom we used to uh, school for from the same university that guy could even bet the money meant for food even money meant for basic needs and a very sensitive things and the guy would be there you know betting believing that he might actually hit that one lucky day he gets a couple of millions and that's the dream and that is the uh, you know thinking of the people and this one can actually be on a crisis i bet the institutions uh, i bet uh, you should be actually consuming information about how to save and all those kind of things you know you'd rather even have some cash in a bank lying idle rather than having that money being bet somewhere because some of these betting areas, you guys, you are doing it. I'm not going to mention any kind of a betting thing, but you're supposed to be very careful. They are there to make money, and there is nothing wrong with that. Because for this world, one thing you're supposed to understand is either you're a predator or you're a prey. You have to be either on the winning side or the losing side. It does not have that in between. It's either you're on the, on the that side or the other side. So it's good to be very keen and cautious on what you're getting yourself into. Otherwise, you can pick a thing that you can actually leave to regret as far as the finance is concerned. And we have a lot of weird um, stories of people who have actually bet with cattle. I have seen people losing their, uh, their jobs because of betting. I have seen people getting into their unhealthy debt because of betting. I have seen people even selling their basic thing you find somebody can even sell a table can even sell a television or even a phone even just anything that can actually you know generate some income just for the sake of them getting into the debt or rather into the betting and you can just imagine things if you dare combine three things if you're a man you combine your betting or the gambling you combine it with alcohol and you top it up the icing cake or the, the top of the icing that <laughs> you have a weakness with ladies you throw parties uh, you know right and left and center you're gonna get yourself not only in crisis but a very very big crisis so it's always good to understand this okay when you're betting you're actually subjecting your cash to what we call very risky affairs and there is no even assuring your capital preservation and if something does not assure you the capital preservation that is an area that you should not even think about getting into it because you're gonna get yourself into crisis and that money of yours you're gonna not only make money from that cash that you're anticipating to make money but also the cash that you have at your hand the money that you have by your name will actually lose it and that's the way you get yourself into crisis i've even seen some people even affecting their marriages you find some people the social life is being affected why you have some withdrawals these withdrawals are actually as a result of you betting you lose your money you even lose what you call the social touch because you're feeling like or you're thinking on what you can be you know i can just give you example of exactly what goes in the head of a gambler or somebody who is actually betting you know let's say you have like a one a one thousand kenyan chili and then you want to bet then you have looked at maybe some few matches here and there i'm not gonna mention any names and then you think like team A and B are actually playing, then you actually sort of quote unquote be sure like team A will beat B and then you bet on the same maybe probably you bet with half of that amount of money and then the 500 goes then you're remaining with 500 so instead of contemplating be like hmm you know what 500 is gone let me just preserve the remaining 500 I do other thing okay now the point is is that you go ahead and be like hmm ah team X and Y are actually playing therefore I can be able to bet the remaining amount of money maybe combine team X and Y with C and Z combine the two I'm gonna have a bigger odd so that I cannot own only get return on this but the return will assure me that i'll get my 500 back and also something on top of that so you take the 500 you throw in there in the name of actually trying to chase the what you lost before and then in that process you actually <laughs> lose even that what you've actually bet now you're done a thousand bob is not there assuming that that a thousand bob was meant to buy for the food for that particular day therefore it means there is a crisis back at home maybe you're receiving some calls or you have to go back with something maybe there's a basic need maybe you have to buy some uh, you know pay you electricity or water or whatever the thing it is you go back home you have nothing then you have to lie probably to your landlord your landlady your agent or whatever the thing it is probably you have to lie to that particular shop that usually borrow maybe food and what have you so in that case that actually it makes you financially disciplined and then at the same time you're lying and then at the same time you're actually having a problem as far as the finances are concerned that particular individual you usually tend to even to have a mental problem and that mental issue can actually result to you having some other chaotic things here 
here and there. So it's good to make sure that you don't get yourself into some of the stressing thing that does not assure you any tangible return. So be keen, cautious and careful at all the time, especially when you're dealing with your cash. So what exactly can we actually focus on instead of this kind of a betting? I know the moment you speak the language of investment because they have low returns, some of the people tend to bash them. They just want to take that 500 thing, then they get I don't know what odds, they put it out there, then they are sure the potential win of 100,000, 200,000. They feel that they're comfortable with that. You see, they, they, they just show you what you are potentially able to win with that amount of money. And that is not even proportional. You know, what you're supposed to do, you're supposed to be patient because all these guys, what they lack is the patience character. That's what they don't have in their life. So if you can incorporate the patience thing inside of your life, if you can actually be intentional, creating wealth through the appropriate route so that at least you know one thing, yes, I know it does not go as fast as I may wish, but the reality is I'm not only risking, I'm not only securing that one, I have but I'm also you know sequentially I'm able to see that my money is increasing especially if I get to things like uh, you know compound interest and what have you therefore I'm able to build my wealth and also you build a character of integrity so that you grow along your money rather than just jumping and by the way I don't know whether you have seen this let's say even you're lucky some of the guys who get this money you tend they tend to squander that money by the time you realize everything that you actually want it is not there with you you've squandered almost everything you go back to the crisis so it is always good to make sure that at least you understand yourself who is you how do you do your thing so that at least you don't get yourself into crisis as far as this for me if you tell me if you ask me i would say this is a country on crisis when you see these kind of numbers you know if this money was actually channeled and you know it's kind of funny because in kenya the greatest or the biggest people the, and i want you to listen to this carefully <clears throat> can you imagine this the largest number of people who have invested in our stock market are foreigners not even Kenyans. I'll repeat, people come all the way from outside the, the, the Kenyan country, they come and invest in our stock market and people are actually betting. So it tells you there is something financial discipline in the, in between. Some financial knowledge and literacy should be, we are supposed to be, and that's why you find some of these shares sometimes they crash. Why? Because the moment we near the elections, and obviously you can just tell what happens during the any electioneering cycle in any given country in Africa, with all the due respect to those who are stable, you find some of the guys, they tend to speculate the market, they feel like, anything can happen so they dump all those shares they get their money back and that's why you have a very nasty bear market whereby the shares go down and then after the electioneering period they come back they buy again the shares goes up and what have you so that kind of roller coaster movement you know we don't have like a stable you know we have a lot of you know when you zoom in into that graph you see a lot of noises so i would say honestly speaking this is this this is our market this is our stock market we should actually pump our money back there and i don't even know what the government does can't even teach people on how to do that specific thing it is kind of annoying you know there is a certain page that i usually follow on 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 on, on tiktok it's called nssf uganda that's an amazing page i just love the way nssf in uganda does their things you find they educate their citizen and what have you on a very serious note as far as the nns and because even in kenya we have the nssf the same same name nssf i think it's about about uh, uh, retirement safety about the old age and retirement and what have you the way they explain to you you feel oh my goodness i'm just at home you know uh, but but here in kenya nobody I don't think I don't even think they have an account. I stand corrected if they have an account. They don't even teach people. These are the things that they should teach people. You know, as young as you are, once you get into the university, learn to get into the stock market rather than getting into these kind of things that can actually get yourself into crisis and all those kind of things. But it is what it is. I mean, who will be here to teach us the thing? Anyway, before that, good Joseph will be here by God's grace and I will try the best that I can to teach you all these specific things on how you can be able to invest. For now, it's a good buy. And you can always take my number from the specific of the, from the description of this specific video and let's talk business. For now, it's a good buy and see you in the next one.